Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bokor, your host for episode 82 here. As we're back into the frozen tundra of North America, at least the eastern seaboard and southern Ontario here where I live. So welcome. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules to watch a bit of my news update here. So let me get to a few stories that I'm going to talk about today. First story is dealing with local charging, and I've been talking a lot about different charging networks coming up around the globe. This one's here where I live, in the province of Ontario. There was an announcement last week or a week or so ago from Hydro One and Ontario Power Generation, our hydro providers here, that they're launching a new company. It's called the IV Charging Network, and the plan is to deploy um, 160 level three of DC fast chargers at 73 locations across Ontario. Uh, which will help, of course, alleviate some of those travel uh, barriers, I guess, for long distance that we have with some vehicles and range anxiety and all that stuff that goes with it as we have more um, networks popping up. And IV locations are planned to be less than 100 kilometers apart on average. So that's good. So that means that most all electric vehicles will have plenty of juice to get between charging stations, even in the winter, which is a good factor. So congratulations on another company starting up. Um, they, these will be deployed by the end of 2021. So there's already within the first week or so after this announcement, there's already three or four stations that have already opened up. And we will see these uh, the rest of the 150 plus were, uh, open up before the end of next year. So good stuff. Quick news about Samsung from a battery cell manufacturer, Samsung. They've announced that they're going to add further expansion to their Hungarian plant, uh, the plant that's in Gud, if I pronounce that correctly. It's a lithium-ion cell manufacturing plant. They're going to invest uh, about $994 million US, or just over 900 million euros, into this plant by 2030 to start retooling and revamping up to gradually increase the production to 18 million cells per month. Currently, um, uh, sorry, it's around 6 million in the first plant and 12 million in the second plant as they continue to expand. Uh, so that's good. Obviously, we've talked about and I've uh, mentioned about battery shortages and supply chain issues with some of the manufacturers and, and Samsung SDA is one of the major ones that uh, auto manufacturers go to. So this should help their causes. Now, also, there's been some reports from uh, Samsung SDI that they want to start to apply a new formula of chemistry to their battery cells. They want to use the NCA formula, which is lithium nickel cobalt aluminum oxide for the cathode type materials in the Hungarian plant to increase the energy density of its batteries. Now, of course, NCA is a formula in the chemistry that's most uh, widely used by the Panasonic Tesla relationship. So obviously it's a chemistry that works and it works really well. So that'll be good. Um, that's all that, that the press had to say about the announcement. But again, it's good to see that the battery manufacturers are recognizing the need to increase production and to build more plants. And let's keep our eye on Samsung SDI. Been talking a lot about Volkswagen, as you folks know, and unfortunately they seem to be struggling now with some issues regarding the initial launch of the ID3 in their uh, new MEB platform. There's some software glitches, and I think I've talked about this a few months back where they were struggling a little bit with some problems, and apparently these problems seem to be more significant. Um, and, and it's also, um, affecting Porsche and Audi as well to, uh, of course, and they're having some difficulties or they may experience difficulties with their lineups as this software problem uh, gets uh, more expansion. Apparently from the, these reports that I'm reading, the software was hastily written and deployed uh, with a lot of testing, but unfortunately when you move fast on projects, sometimes things can happen. So apparently many of the systems do not understand each other, which leads to dropouts. So. Um, High-ranking VW experts do assure that they want to have their goal of delivering uh, ID3s. Again, these are European-bound only models this summer. Uh, and summer could be September because you can get into late summer, which is the early part of September. So it could be that time frame. So let's wait and see. I hope a VW could certainly figure this out. I mean, they certainly have the scale and the people to do that. Let's hope they figure it out and keep on track with ID3 deliveries. Quick announcement from Fiat Chrysler, or FCA. They've uh, completed the production line for their fully electric version of the Fiat 500 at the Mia Fori plant in Turin, and they have started actually production of the pre-series. Now, they want to uh, market launch this Fiat 500. Uh, it's an all-electric, of course, version for June of this year, 
and uh, initial production estimates are in the 80,000 units uh, per year. They were going to have this announcement and actually have a vehicle, a prototype uh, pre-production vehicle at the Geneva Motor Show. But if you haven't heard, that show was canceled. I got an email actually yesterday about it, announcing that the show was canceled due to the coronavirus issues and um, just con you know uh, preventative measures for um, not having people gather in large places for a long amount of time, a large number of people in places for a large number for a long time. So it's unfortunate that Geneva Motor Show has been canceled because there was going to be a lot more announcements and concepts revealed at the show. But it's understandable with what's going on now. Again, okay, just remember, folks, as well, um, I was talking to somebody the other day about, you know, the impact, potential impacts on coronavirus. And we're already seeing it in the stock market and, and some of the financials around the world that things are looking pretty gloomy, that things are going down into the red and that there will be manufacturing delays, not only in the tech sector, a sector, but certainly in the automotive sector. And I do anticipate this to hit battery electric in the EV marketplaces, as well as a lot of components and um, supply chain comes from countries that are being impacted by this uh, this outbreak, which um, isn't still as serious as it could be, but but I think if people are erring on the side of caution, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot, a lot of uh, manufacturers come into delay aspects, especially those that do manufacture out of North America. We'll have to wait and see how that impacts, but and I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, if we see more overseas auto shows canceled as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Now, Renault has officially confirmed that their first electric model that they're going to build uh, from for its Romanian subsidiary Dacia will come out within the next two years. So they seem to be a little late, but they're at least better getting there uh, eventually. Um, it's going to be a modified version of the Renault City k Z electric com compact car that's offered in China for the European market. Uh, they're going to dub it the Dacia Urban City Car. Uh, be all electric vehicle, of course. Not, not not a lot of details given other than that they expect this to hit Europe uh, next year in 2021 and be available onwards. Should have a WLTP range of about 250 kilometers, uh, which is okay. Again, we know real world or EPA will probably be closer to 200 or so, but for a small uh, compact and subcompact vehicle, that's actually plenty for getting a zipping around town of course now the key here that caught my eye is the price point it's going to cost around 15,000 euros including the battery and depending on what European country um, you're buying you would buy this in and uh, what subsidies and purposes that you would be using it for the price could could even lower and if you look at Germany for an example you can take some of the bonuses into account um, and some incentives and this vehicle could be had for less than 10,000 euros Wow, not bad for an all-electric car that'll get you 200 plus kilometers of range on a daily charge. Not bad at all, and it'll have a standard CCS plug and so forth. So I'm glad to see the pricing really starting to come down to the mass market that I see. That that 20k sub 20k is a great great price point, even for small subcompact cars. It looks decent. So let's wait and see what happens. I really hope that this thing comes to fruition um, as uh, Renault plans it. Now, a vehicle that caught my eye this week, and I was I was kind of thinking, should I report on it? Should I not? But, you know, it does fall into the EV landscape, uh, even though it's a little bit kind of in a weird area. It's the Citroën uh, unveiled their new um, all-electric two-seat production vehicle. It's called the Citroën AMI. Based on the AMI 1 concept, it was created for the 100th anniversary of the brand. Now, it's classified kind of as a car but not a car because it's a it's really more of a low speed passenger vehicle and i know in the u.s and canada there are actually certain designations for low speed passenger vehicles uh that prohibit their use and and you know uh, a number of occupants and where you can drive them and all this kind of stuff so this seems to be something similar but uh, with the caveat that you can still uh, drive this on public roads uh, in Europe without a driver's license. You just have to be over 14 years in France or 16 uh, over the age of 16 in the other uh, in the average European countries. So without a driver's license and you're 16, you can drive one of these. It's got a 6 kilowatt electric motor and a 5.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. Doesn't sound like a lot, I know, but it's perfect for city centers where you just kind of need a zip car type concept where you want to zip around and uh, do some tasks. It can, uh, on a single charge, get you up to about 70 kilometers or about 43 and a half miles in all electric. Now, price point on these things is going to be really, really low. They're talking about uh, $6,900 euro 
or 7500 bucks, uh, 7500 US including VAT, uh, and that's before any incentives that it may qualify for. You could you could even rent these the plans for a long-term rental $19.99 euro per month. Um, so you rent to use kind of thing. So pretty cool concept. I get it. You know, it's great to, as a city uh, urban runabout, kind of like a zip car, you know, with a top speed of up to 45 kilometers per hour. So definitely not going to see these on the highways, but on city streets, it'll be great. And charging time only takes three hours and that's from a standard uh, electrical socket. So certainly something that I could see car sharers pick up on massively and switch fleets over into something like this because of the total cost of ownership will be much better for those. So stay tuned for that. If anybody has more information or you, you start seeing some of these out uh, drive around, maybe in practice mode, experimental mode, or uh, whatever in, uh, in road testing, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. This is a cool looking thing. Now, lastly, I have an email that I received for mailbag from a viewer named Johan. Johan, thank you very much for sending me this. It just basically talked about that he likes the show. He's been watching me for quite a long time and finds uh, finds me informative and uh, and helps him sleep sometimes. No, I'm just kidding about that. But hopefully, worst case is maybe I can help you fall asleep fairly quickly if you put me on. So that's okay. But he sent me this uh, this video file of this Tesla Model S conversion. It's a hearse, as you can see in the video footage here um it, hey you know why not i mean you can you can take something and modify it for anything and i think their tagline for this company is from ashes to ashes and dust to dust you know it's a non-exhaust way to to the last resting place on this green planet so certainly fitting for that so thanks johan for being on the lookout and sending me this video it's always cool to see what people can think of all right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 82. Thank you very much for taking the time to tune in. Always appreciate you uh, watching. Uh, if you feel like liking, great. Uh, certainly hope you will subscribe to the channel. That's very important uh, from a YouTube metric to have subscribers. And uh, I continue to experience growth, which is great. And uh, I have a lot of viewers watching. So if you would take a, a second and subscribe, I, you won't get uh, a ton of messaging from me on that. Just a standard YouTube. YouTube stuff but thank you very much for those who do comment uh, very active and good comments all around and I appreciate the feedback again if you're not aware uh, I also want to thank my patreon supporters I'm always humbled by them and if you're interested in helping me out even a buck a month if you'd like or a cup of coffee a month or whatever you'd like to help support me in my endeavors to continue on with the show and the things that I do and the plans and, and you know the trips that I take and things like that to continue to provide coverage that would be much appreciated um, now, there's no more stuff to announce as far as any events in the upcoming future. So I do want, again, want to encourage everybody who is into the electric vehicle marketplace or wants to learn more, look around for your local club or organization. I'm sure you may have one in where you live that you can get more information and even join and go out there and help spread the EV message. So on that note, I want to again thank everybody for watching. Please, everybody stay safe and I will see you when I see you the next time. Take care. Bye-bye.